Order. Question number two, Andrew. Order. Question number two, Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Does he stand by his response to a mental health nurse who said they are so short-staffed they work in double shifts that, quotes, they need to be consulting with their employers about the suitability of working those hours? If so, does he know who sets the funding for DHBs that employ mental health nurses? Good question. The right hon. Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, yes, I do know who sets the funding for DHBs, uh, and that is the government of the day. Uh, and there's also an additional rule, as I understand it, that DHBs can't spend less than they did last year on mental health, but they're also f always free to spend more. And given the amount of extra money they've had each year, I think something like half a billion dollars extra last year, I'd expect that they have been spending more on mental health because demand's been growing. Yeah. Mr Speaker, in the spirit of so, Sign Language Week, uh, uh, Supplementary, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. I'll continue practising. Does he know cash-strapped DHBs uh, closed 12 mental health beds in the last year after employees told their employers they were too understaffed to safely care for their patients? And how is that a good result? The right honourable prime minister, Mr. Speaker, the, the member. I know understands the way that the hospital system and these services are funded, and that is they have local boards who make decisions about where the money goes. So if a DHB is in the situation where it feels like it uh, doesn't have sufficient staff, it can spend the money to go and get the staff and, um, and increase, increase the service. And in fact, over the last five years, the number of registered nurses and addiction services has gone up 23 per cent, and community mental health it's increased, it's increased 22 per cent, and in hospital-based mental health services there are 12 per cent more nurses. That tells you DHBs are spending more on mental health services. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Do it next time. Why is his government requiring underfunded and overstretched DHBs to find $200 million of cuts by the end of the financial year? Yep. Yeah, right. The Right Honourable Prime Another Minister. Another example of social investment. Uh, the member is not characterising that the way it actually works uh, in the DHBs. They get a large amount of extra money each year, by far the largest allocation in any budget this government has overseen. Uh, they are expected to use their own judgment to make the best use of that cash. There are theoretical calculations about efficiency, dividends and so on, but the core of it is they get more money every year, which has enabled them to employ more doctors, more nurses and provide more services. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. What does he say to the mental health worker who told the People's Mental Health Report that mental health services are, quote, stretched, inadequate and waiting for the inevitable to occur, another major incident? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, that mental health worker, if they observe some aspect of the service that means there is a real risk, ought to take it up with their employer. Their employers and the DHBs have, I mean, some of these, some of these organisations have budgets of over a billion dollars, and they have the opportunity to fill the gaps where they believe there is real stress or real risk. In fact, they are obliged to do that. Supplementary, Mr. Supplementary Speaker. question, Andrew Little. Does he stand by his admission about people with mental health issues being caught up in the justice system that, quotes, in some cases, people have been dealt with inappropriately? And if so, why isn't the government doing more at the primary level before people end up in the justice system? Good question. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, it's been a long-running issue about the delivery of mental health services in prisons, and there's statutory reasons why it's complicated, and I understand more work is being done uh, because the treatment of mental illness in our prisons was done very poorly under the previous government and has improved dramatically ever since. 
supplementary, Mr. Speaker. Order. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Does he regret? Does he regret signing off on consecutive budgets that have cut funding for mental health services in real terms, resulting in some providers closing their doors and primary mental health care being cut here in Wellington? The right honourable prime minister. Well, Mr. Speaker, because that's not correct, I don't have regrets. Nothing like that member's regrets at recruiting Willie Jackson. Supplementary, Order. Mr. Speaker. Order. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. That's something I'd be laughing about in a big hurry. Doesn't he accept it's time for some fresh thinking? After nine years of a deteriorating mental health system, we actually need to fund our mental health services properly and with a focus on helping people before they reach crisis point. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, one of the strengths of this government is that it's always applying fresh thinking, uh, fresh angles to well understood or well known problems. Uh, with respect to mental health, there has been more money, but of course, uh, unlike Labor, we don't believe that more, endlessly more money answers every problem. We've got, very, we've got a much better understanding of which parts of the population are most vulnerable from mental illness, some of whom spend 20 or 30 years in our welfare system because they're undertreated. So our fresh thinking is about applying better ways of attracting, uh, better ways of applying the money to those needs. Supplementary question, Julie Ann Genta. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If short staffing isn't such a problem across the country, why are desperate parents reporting children have to be suicidal or self-harming just to get help from the mental health system? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, in the first case, staffing issues are managed by the DHBs according to the plans laid out by their local boards, half of whom are elected people. They actually are the people who make the decisions about where the money goes. They can always apply more money to mental health, and they have been by when we can see that over five years there's been 20 to 25 per cent increase in the staffing of most mental health services. With respect to those individuals, with respect to those individuals, the response times, as I understand, are measured and uh, have been improving. But there will still be families who, get, who are in distress because they can't get the service straight away for their young person. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Julianne Genta. Will his government commit to an independent nationwide inquiry into mental health services to ensure that we can get to the bottom of the structural problems in delivering those services and any need for increased funding, given what he described yesterday as increasing demand and complexity? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, no, I don't think an inquiry would tell us anything that isn't known already. Uh, the issue here is not whether to spend a whole lot of resource on an inquiry. It is to find uh, it is better decision-making in DHBs if they're overlooking need that they're meant to be meeting among their population, because they have to prioritise, and finding better way, particularly, of approaching the issue of prevention in the case of mental health. Supplementary. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Julie Ann Gentry. Does he accept that increasing population and increasing demand for mental health services means that the amounts of increased funding that he has referred to simply haven't been sufficient to meet the need out there in the community? And how bad will it have to get before his government responds? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, the uh, Government and the Minister of Health and the DHBs have been responding to increased need. Uh, they're spending more, they're employing more people, uh, there's been quite dramatic increases in some services. I think there's something like there's almost double the number of people now in addiction services as there were six or seven years ago. That's a massive expansion yeah. uh, and probably now you're more likely to get treatment than used to be the case. Uh, so, and the government will continue to respond to the need. Question number three, Simon O'Connor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.